The gauntlet has been dropped. We will have a battle for undisputed. Is this lightweight? No, it's heavyweight. In the ring, I'll show you. The unified lightweight champion of the world, Jeremy Oh, what a shot that was. Roma's on fire. This is what championship boxing is all about. Get your popcorn, get ready. These are the fights that the fans like. Much anticipated showdown for all four belts that are currently held by Devin Haney. Can the undefeated Las Vegas native retain undisputed status at 135 pounds against Vasily Lomachenko, the three division champ who has long talked about this really being the only goal that he set forth? Undisputed, yep. claiming all four belts. I want to draw attention to the comment made by Devin Haney's father, Bill Haney, there when he said, This is a fight that will give Devin Haney credit as an undisputed champion, yep. that will validate him as an undisputed champion. Because I think still you look back at what happened going to Australia against Cambosis. Remember, that was lined up to be Lomachenko who was supposed to take that fight before the war in Ukraine altered the plans. But you always had the sense that it was understood whether it was Haney or whether it was Lomachenko either fighter was going to be an overwhelming favorite to come back with all four belts. This is the fight that very much feels like the fight that stamps the term undisputed Dre. It, it most certainly is and you know uh, perception is not always reality and even though you know Devin Haney went to Australia which is not no easy feat. And it's easy to take away from Cambosis now, but he, he showed up on the night with Teofimo Lopez, and he's the type of guy that if you don't show up, he can't expose you. Devin Haney didn't allow that to happen, but he's not going to be universally recognized as the guy until he beats the guy. And he's the guy with the belts, but the guy who has the name is Vasily Lomachenko, and they understand that. So that's what this fight gives him. This is Devin Haney's fight to lose. He's got the momentum. He's got the fresher legs. And Loma has to show that what we saw against Ortiz uh, was ring rust, was, you know, the effects of the war psychologically and, and physically. And if he's that same Loma, it's going to be hard for him to overcome this young fighter. But if, he show, if he's able to turn back that clock and show that other gear, we got ourselves a great fight. Mark, do you believe he will be the same Loma that we've always known him to be, not the one who was shaking off ring rust last fall? I, I don't know. One thing Dre said, I, I, I do think that we diminish what Haney did in going over there. And one of the things that Haney made it look so easy, pitching two consecutive shutouts, that's just like, oh yeah, he he was nothing anyway. Not true. Coming into a stadium like that, when It's a lot to deal you know, with. That, that, was, that was extraordinary. As far as Loma, if he looks anything like he did in July against Jermaine Ortiz, he's got some real problems. He's also on the wrong side of history here. History of boxing is, the story of boxing is, Good big guy beats a good little guy. The old guy gets vanquished by the young star. He's on the wrong side of both of those e equations. It's going to take a lot. It, it, it would be truly historic. You know, the problem for Loma is that he's got a quick first step, but he's the shorter fighter, shorter arm fighter. If he can't get you with that first attack, he doesn't have an inside game. He's going to need that against a longer arm, longer, taller fighter. Um, in this fight, in the main event against Haney, he's going to need that. So, but the problem with that is you got fresh legs, who understands distance and range, and he's going to make it hard for Loma to hit him with that first line, that first attack. Listen, we had them in the ring together back at Madison Square Garden. We looked up, and I know it was it was a guy in fight mode fighting that night. The other guy walking around relaxed, walk around waiting. But even the other day, pre-training camp, you see two of these guys, the size advantage is massive yeah, yeah, yeah. for Haney. It's a lot to overcome for Lomachenko. It really is. Um, I've always said that Lomachenko, the reason why he's able to compete at this weight class is because he's more athletic, athletic than a lot of these guys. But when you get when he's faced with a guy that's long and just as athletic as him, if not more, then he's he somewhat can't be Loma, be the Loma that we used to seeing. He can't get off on that, that weak side angle. He can't attack the way he usually do. He can't he can't get past that long guard of of, of, of uh, Haney, Haney or the long jab of Haney. Um, it's a difficult fight. I, mean, I also think it's a difficult fight for Haney as well. Of course it is. Because yeah. what happens if, if Loma, because he has experience, and this is on paper the best fight that Haney has ever fight, the best fighter that he's by ever far. faced by far. But you know, with that being said, I just think this. For Haney, 
this is the most significant fight for Lomachenko. I think this is the this is everything for his career. I think that mm -hmm. this is totally everything for his career because everything he did in the past is great. I get everything he did in the past, but in today's era, if you're not undisputed in today's area era, for some apparent reason, you're not considered great. Honestly, all uh, these guys, so all sure these, seriously, this is all he wanted. I get it. This is all that Lomachenko wanted. How many but, undisputed guys are there in boxing? Very few. No, it's well, a lot more today. Nowadays, this is the, this is the, the, this is the year of the undisputed, bro. This is the era of the undisputed, but man. Undisputed sometimes is about how the chips fall, the politics, the but, organizations. But I think tactically, I don't know if he can't fight inside, but I think the, the, the tactical question comes down to this. And, and he's been unable to do it the last few times out, or unable to do it with the ease that Lomachenko has done in the past. Can he get around that left side. Can he get around that jab and, and, and get to his, what I'm get saying, to his, yeah, his flanks? What I'm saying is he'll throw inside. He's, he'll throw a body shot, an uppercut if you allow him, but an educated attack where he knows what he's doing, where he can break a taller fighter down, it's going to be difficult to contain. But what about the work rate of Loma? I mean, Loma likes to take rounds off early in the fights. And then he'll and we call know, it download. He, he don't have time to you download. Know, you know who provided? He don't have time. Do you know who provided the blueprint? Who? To your female. And that he kept Keeping his distance. distance. Yes. Devin Haney is a lot more dangerous coming off the two fights against Cambosis, taking that trip over to Australia. He's more dangerous now. He's got that deposit from that experience going into this fight. It, it is interesting when you think about the past year and a half for each guy. It couldn't be more different. One guy takes the biggest test of his life, goes across the ocean twice, becomes undisputed champion, and that comes because the other guy had to step away from his sport to go and serve his country, protect his family with the atrocities of the war taking place in Ukraine. It is interesting to hear Loma, who, uh, you know, Loma is always very serious when we meet with him in production meetings, when he's interviewed, and he feels he is as locked in as he was of the gold Olympic, being Olympic yep. gold medals. That living with the dream every single day since he was a young boy, and then he delivered on it, not once but twice. That's the level of lock in he feels he, for undisputed. He's always locked in, Joe. I mean, it, it's one. It, it, it's a talent. The same same way he holds his breath for four minutes. The question is, and, and it's been creeping up the last couple of years, is, is that type of concentration, is that type of locked in enough? Is he coming up against the limitations of his physical capabilities, size and age? And those limitations showed up prior to Tiafimo Lopez mm -hmm. in terms of the wear and tear. This appears to be, from all accounts, everything here, a very healthy, a very refreshed, a very ready Vasily Lomachenko. Not a guy who's dealing with contemplating or hearing from the advice of his father whether or not they should even go forward with the fight because of an injured right shoulder. He's going to need to be healthy, both physically and emotionally, going into this fight. And a guy like Loma, who's got 400 amateur fights, two gold medals, it's, it's in you. Like, you, you're a winner. This is like, this is what you live for. He's so, got one good one left I, in him, I think. I, I don't believe, like, when people say he's locked, he's always locked in to Mark's point. Like, this is just who he is. So it's a great opportunity for both guys. But if, so here it is. This is what's coming your way on May 20th in an ESPN Plus pay-per-view. Plus, a card that starts on ESPN that'll feature other championship performers. And then we will get to the former two-division champion, Oscar Valdez, against Blue Nose, Adam Lopez, and Ray Murataya, the under defeated lightweight prospect in action against Jeremy Nakatila that night. Mm. Those are three exceptional fights on a very well-priced pay-per-view come May 20th.